Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today I'm going to walk you through all the different ways that Databricks is helping users use not just DBRX, but really any open source, third party, or even custom Gen AI model with their own enterprise data. Uh, we're going to kind of walk through a lot of the different touch points and, and what you can do with Gen AI models on Databricks. So we're going to start off with the AI playground. Now, the AI playground is something we've set up so that users can super easily chat with different either foundation models or custom or open source models or third party models and compare the results side by side. So in this case, we've chosen DBRX on the left and on the right, we're going to pick Llama 270B. We're going to tell them that they are a helpful coding assistant and we're going to ask it to write a Python function that determines if a given number is prime. And so what you can get a feel for here is general speed for each model, how long the first token takes. You can tweak different things like uh, hyperparameters or temperature, top P, limit the max tokens, all sorts of good stuff. This lets you get a really easy feel for how different models might react to different prompts. Now this is powered by our foundation model API. If you go over to the serving, you'll see that we've got a lot of foundation models, uh, open source models already hosted, ready to go for you. This even includes an embedding model. Uh, this makes it super easy to get up and running by just calling the models via an API. You can also host your own model. So in this case, you see we have a self-hosted model, which is actually a rag chain that I hosted uh, two weeks ago. This lets you use custom models uh, in different places as well. You can also link third-party models, uh, OpenAI, Anthropic, et cetera. And it gives you a way to basically abstract your model through an API so that when you change a model, you can leave all the rest of your code infrastructure intact. So now let's say that you want to actually call a model uh, against a table of data, right? We actually have something called the AI query function within Databricks SQL. And this lets you point to one of those endpoints. In this case, we're going to say DBRX, and we're going to give it a prompt. We're going to say you are categorizing questions from a webinar related to generative AI. Please rate the question on how relevant it is. For a little bit of background, we had a webinar uh, some time back where we had over 900 questions. Now, some of them were really good questions about generative AI that we wanted to answer, but some of them were things that were totally unrelated. And so we kind of wanted to filter those out using the power of a language model alongside of our own data. We can actually just run an AI query and have the model tell us which questions are relevant. So you can see here, what if you have domain specific corpus? How do you integrate that into DBRX? That is a relevant question and it gets a five out of five. However, hi, Sean, it's echoing, is not relevant. And that gets a one out of five, right? And so you can see it's a really powerful way to immediately use generative AI alongside your data. Now, let's say that you a prompt isn't enough, right? And you want to actually augment the results of your model with some kind of data. And generally, the way that people do this is something called retrieval augmented generation or RAG. In this case, we're going to show, and we're going to jump over to our Unity catalog here, is we're going to take a bunch of PDFs, a bunch of research papers that our CTO, Matei Zaharia, has been an author on. And this represents data that DBRX has not been trained on, and so it doesn't have knowledge of. Now, before we go into that, I want to talk real quick about Unity Catalog. The reason Unity Catalog is important here is that it lets you govern not just your data. You see we have a bunch of tables here, but also your AI models. So once you've trained a model, you can put it and register it into a catalog just the same as you would your data. You can do functions, you can even do Unity catalog volumes. And that's really important because it lets you assign permissions and track lineage all in one place as people build out these more compli uh, complex compound AI systems. You know, lineage and governance, governance is super important, and we're making that really easy for everybody. Now, if we go to our Unity catalog volume, you'll see there's a PDF landing volume. This is where we stored a bunch of PDFs that represent the research papers that Matei has been an author on. And we're going to skip the ETL process for now. But we have parsed all of that into chunks of just the raw text. 
So you can see here are raw, the raw text for all of these different papers. And now what you typically need to do for a RAG system is you need to take this chunked text, you need to put it through an embedding model, and you need to create a vector search index out of it. Fortunately, we make that super easy to do. If you just click here, create vector search index, all you have to do is fill in a new things, example index, we're not gonna create this one, we've already made one, but I'm just gonna show you what it will look like to do it. We have a primary key, we're gonna point it to an endpoint, which we've created. Uh, we're gonna tell it to compute embeddings, we're gonna tell it the embedding column, and again, thanks to the foundation model API, we already have an embedding model hosted, we can do this either triggered, so however often you need to do it, or continuous if you say, have a table that's going to be constantly getting new data that you want embedded. And when you run that, you end up with a vector search index that will be constantly kept up to date with the data that supplies it. This data, in this case, is all of that raw text from the PDFs. So now let's test it. Let's jump into a notebook real quick. Uh, we've set up our vector search index here. This is the same one we were just looking at. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually ask the raw uh, DBRX model, what is Aries? Now, this is a trick question. It does not know what Aries is. Aries is a concept in one of Matei's research papers. So we're going to ask it. And it's going to tell us that Aries is the Atmospheric Remote Sensing Infrared Exoplanet Large Survey, a planned space telescope by NASA. This is not true. There is a project from NASA with that name, but not with this acronym. This is a hallucination, right? Now, how do we take this model, use the PDF and all that, the research paper data that we have now parsed down into this vector search index and link them together to get a much better answer grounded in truth. So first, let's check that our vector search index is working as we expect. We're going to take our vector search index and do a similarity search with the prompt that we just asked, what is Aries? What this should do is it should go and look through all of the parsed texts, and what it'll bring back is the most relevant, relevant results. In this case, you'll see that the first result it came back with was Aries, an automated evaluation framework for retrieval augmented generation systems. And then, you know, a bunch more text that goes into what it actually does. So, that gives me some you know, good feeling that our vector search index is working correctly. Now, this is kind of a diagram of what's gonna happen. We're gonna take the question, what is Aries? We're gonna embed it. We're gonna do the similarity search like you just saw, return the relevant context, feed all of that into the LLM, in this case, DBRX, and it's gonna give us a much better answer. This is all the code that does that. Uh, you know, We don't have time to actually go through it, but essentially it is a prompt that contains both the context and the question, so what is Aries? And then this is what returns from the similarity search. Now we can simply ask the chain, what is Aries? Now we can go and grab that extra context. And now, instead of telling us that it is a telescope system, it's telling us that Aries is an automated RAG evaluation system introduced for evaluating retrieval augmented generation systems along the dimensions of context relevance answer faithfulness, and answer relevance. Awesome. So now you could see that you could replace this PDF data with, say, your company's data. If you have documentation or maybe you have customer support logs and a whole bunch of information that you want your model to use as context to ground it, its truthful answers in, you can see how it's super easy to set up in Databricks. Now let's talk about fine-tuning. Let's say that you have a big set of data of both prompts and expected answers that you would like to take and improve one of your model and, and kind of change how it performs. In this case, uh, we're going to fine tune a MPT-7B, so a smaller model. And we have a bunch of queries along with prompts and expected answers. So in this case, what we're trying to fine tune the model for is to give better queries results, right? Now, again, we make this super easy for our users. We have a fine tuning API. All you have to do is give it a few parameters. Where's the training data? Um, what are the task types? How long do you want this to train? A couple hyperparameters and off it goes. Thanks to MLflow, you can track the run as it goes. And 
when the run is done, we can go into our playground. We can compare the base model here on the left with the fine tune model here on the right. You can see that the base model did not really give us a great answer. However, the fine tune model nailed it. Now to tie it all together and talking about pre-training, what we really wanna drive home is that the same stack that we use to pre-train DBRX is available to all of our customers. We use Unity Catalog, we use our notebooks to clean and parse the data. Everything that we use to pre-train this model is available and we've had customers already successfully using it. So if we look at someone like Replit, they pre-train their CodeGen model using our stack. Now we can ask it, write a Python function to test if a given number is prime. Thanks to their very efficient pre-trained model, it gives us back an answer super fast.